In this video, I'm going to show how to use Tinkercad code blocks to create an algorithmic design of a repeating pattern of rings. We'll use variables to make our design flexible, so that at the end we'll be able to change the radius of the ring and the distance between the rings. Log into code blocks and create a new design so you have a blank code blocks canvas and give it a name. First, we'll create our initial ring by combining two cylinders, one that's solid and one slightly smaller cylinder set to whole so that we can cut out the center of our ring. Drag two cylinders into the canvas, set one to solid and one to whole. Now change their sizes by connecting a scale block to each. Set the Z scale, that's the height, to whatever you'd like. I'm gonna go with something short like 0.5. And for now, leave X and Y on the solid alone, but make the X and Y of the whole smaller so we can cut out the center. To combine these two shapes together, drag in a create new object block, give your ring a name. Then drag in a create group block and sandwich all this code together. If you want to remember what this code does, you can add a comment block anywhere here. Now let's change the size of our ring using a variable. Add a create variable block and name the variable something you'll remember later, like radius. Make sure to drag it above your current code block so that Tinkercad creates it before trying to use it in the code. Let's start with an initial value of five. We haven't added the variable radius yet to our code, so right now when we run it, we get a radius of 10. Now when we scale our shapes, we'll use this variable in place of a number. From the data section of blocks, you'll find the variable you just made. Now when we run it, we see the radius is 5. We know that we always want the whole shape to be slightly smaller than the solid, no matter what the size of the radius is. So to relate the size of the smaller cylinder to the size of the existing radius, we'll use a math equation here, radius times 0.75 and use this to set that scale of the whole shape. Drag the math operator just the same as you dragged the variable name earlier. Let's run this to make sure it still works. Now change the radius variable to some other size and see if this changes your ring. Okay, great. Now we're ready to make copies of this object and position them into a pattern. We're going to make a new object that consists of copies of our current ring, positioned in a line. We'll call it ring line 1. Grab an add copy of object box and select the name of the ring we just created. Each time we make a new ring, we want it to move to its spot in line, so we'll also make a move block. Now how far should each ring move? Let's create a variable for the distance between circles and give it an initial value. Then drag it into the x value on our move block. Great, so this works for one ring, but as soon as we add another copy, we have a problem. We need each new ring to move from its origin to the end of the line, not just to move the distance apart. So we could create a math equation and multiply the second copy two times the distance, the third copy three times the distance, the fourth copy four times the distance, etc., etc. But anytime we start doing something repetitive like this in code, there's probably a better solution. So to do this without writing so many copies by hand, we'll create a loop. Grab the count loop and drop it in. Whatever we put inside this orange loop will happen over and over and over again, as many times as we tell it to happen. Instead of the numbers here, we'll replace it with a value of i, just for the duration of this loop. So let's run this to see how it looks. Finally, we need to copy this line into many lines. We do the same exact code we just used, except instead of moving each circle in the x direction, now we'll take the full line 
copy it and move it in the Y direction. If you want, you can also add a delete block to get rid of the original ring that's now sticking out of the pattern. Some possible next steps for you. Try changing the distance apart and the radius variables to see what kind of different patterns you can make. You could also try changing the shape. This is easily done by selecting a different primitive in place of the original cylinder. You can also change the thickness of the ring by adding a variable for the size of the inner shape compared to the size of the outer shape. Finally, consider sharing your creation by making a GIF of the animation or printing it out using a 3D printer.